Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Linda and this is I. I'm so happy that you guys are all here today. Um, in today's video, it's gonna be like all over the place. I'm gonna be rambling a lot because I have a lot to say. A lot of good things, a lot of emotional things, and a lot of fun things. Or, I don't know, but um, the most exciting part is I am a married woman now compared to where I was last year when you guys saw me on this channel. So a lot has happened in this span of a year. It has not even even been a year since I've been engaged. So there's so much that like literally was planned out for us in this short time. And I just wanted to come on here and give you guys my experience. So let's get into it. I got engaged last year in May 2023 and then we had a six month engagement and then we, we got married in November. It was so hard. Let me tell you guys what I exactly did in my wedding planning to give you insight on what you can do as well. First I found my date, then I found my venue, then I figured out catering, gathered my supporters um, including like just like um, every role that was going to be a part of the wedding. I just gathered that and planned that and then that's when I did like the small small fun parts of the wedding which was like the decorations, table centers, um, invitations, wedding shopping, um, dress shopping and then all of these just fun little things and then I organized all of that and made like an agenda for everyone to know like the timestamps of everything that's happening that wedding weekend. So that's basically what I did and now let's go in depth into my experience it was so hard finding a date that because i didn't know when it was going to happen or where it was going to happen i struggled so much with every detail after that i couldn't really move on because i didn't know like when it was going to happen so if you don't know when it's going to happen i'm like i don't know if it's going to happen in fall or winter or summer so i don't know how to correlate the decorations and i don't know how like how much family can come if we do it this specific time and this specific season and then the other hardest part for me was i did not know if i wanted a big wedding or a small wedding that literally tortured me that was the hardest decision that i literally had to make which was kind of like now looking back at it, it's like it's not even that hard it wasn't even that hard but for me i'm like oh like i don't i'm Hmong, right and Hmong people are all family we're all family so i knew that if i was going to do a big wedding like a lot of people would be there including people that i did not know and then but then I also like, I was like trying to figure out the people that were going to be there. And it was already like over 300 people. So I was like, okay, it's either small, small, and it's like 150. Or if it's over 300, then it's big, big. But I don't know. I just kept going back and forth on that decision. So we didn't even figure that out until like a couple, a couple months later after I was engaged. But then we finally found the date. We were going to originally do a year after we get engaged because i feel like that's the normal timeline of engaged people they do like next year right or like two years from them some people are crazy some people be going like three four years and i'm like why did you even get engaged and because i'm not even gonna get married soon so um i we i originally thought that we were gonna get married the year after but then we were like praying more and then let me just tell you, okay, if you are a Jesus-loving couple, it's really hard not to want to be with your person. So I encourage you guys to keep engagement short. And I, I heard that from like different people as well. Like they would advise me like, keep engagement short. It's really hard to be with your person knowing that that's your person now. You struggle in dating because you don't know if it's your person. But then when you you get engaged, you're like, dang, that's my person. I want to be with them. So then it's so hard uh, to uh, keep yourself in check, if you know what I mean, when you are engaged. So I would encourage you guys to keep engagement short. Um, so we did, he, um, I went on an LA trip and he literally like called me and cried on the phone to me about how like he basically 
feels in his heart that he that like we need to get married sooner you know um and i was like listening to his heart and i'm like okay yeah that does make sense we should but we have to do it in a time frame that would work for us like realistically financially and realistically so we were like okay what about first we're gonna do so we got engaged in may and then we were like february what about february but then we were like that's a little still too far are we gonna do it this year i was like we're gonna do it this year so then we moved it and i think a lot of the times when you're trying to make a decision you you are blocked by the thought of how unrealistic it is but then in reality when you think about it it's like you can actually make it happen if you make it happen so we talked about it and we were like okay what about october mind you at this point it's like july 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 august september october three months i was like okay three months i think that's doable it's fine even though it's short it's doable so then we talked about it with his family as well after we like prayed about it together we talked about it with other people and there and there are some people that wouldn't be able to make it and i was like no i want everyone to be there and like especially like the mandatory immediate family um so then we were like okay we don't have to do it in october and then all the other, like the all the other dates in october were already taken and so we were like okay what about september we we're like we can't do september that's in two months we can't do september so then we were like okay let's do november and it was so it was such an amazing thing because it fell on the most perfect date ever that i would have not imagined our, our wedding to fall on okay my husband's here you want to sit down to my video okay come in here have fun no oh, i'm talking about our wedding Go sit down. Hi, let me just ask you some questions, okay? Okay. Video break. Hey guys, this is my husband. <laughs> so you stopped me at a point when I said that when we were deciding our date. Remember when we were deciding our date? Yeah. And you, I told them that you like you called me during LA, and you were like pouring your heart about how you believe that we should get married like as soon as we can mm -hmm. so why did you want to get married as soon as we could because i love you <laughs> no yeah <laughs> okay but like more details like why did you feel like we should have got married because you're really acting like we're married so it's like why don't we just get married because the things we do as we're married when we're not married does not honor God because we were married. I think in a way, I think how I could honor God more was to marry you, to please him more instead of to just like not be married. I was willing to take that step because I think too many times the world always wants to just like keep dating and like struggle. Mm -hmm. But for me, I would rather just be married and like not struggle no more. But I would rather struggle together to you, but to you, not just because of sexual stuff, but like in the temptation, but because I know that we will do good things together um, for God and just for other, and just for other people too. We were not supposed to go that deep. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks for being here. Love ya. <laughs> okay, we're back to our video um that was the reality basically of all people and even though it, it was kind of deep and a lot to to say maybe we can like do another video of us talking about our dating life and our engagement life and our thought process and where our heart was um for marriage but anyways my wedding experience let's continue that part yeah we um we finally found the date of november 11th and it was such a perfect date because not only was it so cool to get married on 11 11 and have our date literally be one 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 two three i actually got baptized on that day so it was incredible for me to marry the man that i loved here um, on the same day that I basically married Christ and accepted him 
um, into my heart and it, it was it's like a metaphor where like that's also the day now that I share that I accepted my earthly husband into my life it was incredible so um, it was definitely like a wow date for us it was definitely like planned to go that way so I was very happy with that um, so yeah we basically just found our date and because we found our date and it was so soon to the time that we were talking which was like three months away we it narrowed so much down of where we could even have our wedding so we went through a lot of venues and I emailed so many places and, and then it just like because like I said it was so soon a lot of places were not available for us and not available to the capacity that I needed the wedding to be we basically just summed and said that let's do it at my home church and it was so incredible and it, at the end of the day there was so much purpose it only made sense anyways because that's that's where we met exactly in that location that we did our wedding the, the area that we met so it was um it was a really good time not only because we literally met there but also like it was in the heart of our town where like everyone would be able to make it and it was very convenient for everyone and um financially it very much much helped our wedding budget by like thousands of dollars which was incredible um and then the next thing i did was when i gathered my supporters and that was that was a little lighter because it's fun to pick out like the people that are going to support you um and then when i planned for like my decorations and my and i went dress fitting it was also like those were the parts that i could finally go to and like take joy in because those are like the fun parts when i was done struggling where and when i wanted my wedding to be um and then after that i just organized everything and everything was becoming super surreal it was a really great time if you guys see me looking down it's because i i have a whole like document based on what i want to share with you guys um so that's what i did second part we're gonna go to is our advice i my advice to you guys as friends um, my first advice would be your wedding is as minimum and as fancy as you guys want it to be. If you are someone who wants to go all out because that's the day that, that like you take value in, then let it go like, that way. But if you don't mind it being minimalistic, it doesn't have to be so expensive. A lot of reasons people don't want to get married right away is because of financial reasons. They can't afford a wedding, they can't afford this, they can't afford that. But you can if you invest correctly and save correctly and be wise with your money. Um, and if you are creative and you are able to um, manage your wedding budget-friendly way. Also, if you have a lot of um, friends and family and supporters. I'm a very, 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 very good saver. So I guess that doesn't help anyone that like may struggle with budgeting. Um, maybe I'll make a, a video about budgeting because it's, it is something that like a lot of my personal friends and family has struggled with and I would like to help anyone that struggles with that. But anyways, yeah, that's my first advice is don't overload yourself with expenses for your wedding because you have a whole marriage ahead of you that you'll need to be financially stable for um advice number two ask past brides how their experience was this is something that i found myself doing just because i became engaged and i wanted to know like what they were going through what they would change how hard it was how at ease it was and I got two different groups of like the same amount of brides describing almost opposite things that they experienced. I had a gr group of brides that said like it was so easy, so breezy, I felt like it was the best time for me and then I had a group of brides who were like it was so hard um, and I did not feel like it was about me and it was just about pleasing others and it was, I was so burdened so I mean, I guess no matter how it happened, I was able to get a lot of insight on both sides and apply it to my experience. So it, it, please ask for experience. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of 
giving you guys my experience. So if you guys are asking someone, at least you guys have me. I'm here for you guys. Um, tip number three, surround yourself with a body of people who love and support you. And when I say love and support you, I mean loyal to you and want the best for you and they make the whole wedding season that is yours about you. Um, I did I did go through some, some things that I felt a little um, uneased about just cause there, there were some points in my journey where um, even if people are trying to want the best for me it wasn't very kind and so please just surround yourself with a like be kind of wise with the people that you allow to support you my fourth my fourth advice would be your wedding will show the true colors of people um, so be sure to just which this goes with my other advice would be sure to just pick who you would want your supporters to be wisely and I feel like at this time as soon as someone realizes that you're getting married and you're engaged everyone wants to reach their helping hand to you but it's not always true I think that I got like a hundred people be like hey if you need anything let me know if you need anything let me know if, if you need help let me know which was so so sweet and it was so nice but truly like did you really want to help? <laughs> Were you actually like for real gonna be here for me and support me? Um, so just kind of be wise in this season of who you want in your seasonal wedding life because it's a season that you're going to remember forever. Um, so you are gonna remember who was kind of there for you and then who wasn't. So yeah, how fun comment down below and let me know your experiences if you guys went through experience of realizing some colors that you did not know about other people and then my fifth advice is a little funny it kind of goes like anti what I just said but um my fifth advice would be don't take things personally as a Hmong woman I have a lot of ears and eyes so everyone kind of wants to help you so they'll literally like just say what they want and how they say it might not align to how you want them to say it. So I guess just don't pay, take things personally and have the mindset that they're trying their best but also just like stand your ground if anything goes really against of what you want. Alright, now the GOC content okay now we're gonna talk about my actual experience and what I would change um my whole wedding experience was very I don't know how to describe it it was like a very very beautiful moment because I know that I I knew throughout the whole season that it was something that I'm never gonna have to go through again because it's a one-time season in your life I'm not gonna get married again hopefully not Right, babe? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I think that during my wedding journey, it was just very lonely. I felt like I just, it was just a very lonely journey. And not because no one wanted help, but because your wedding is so particular to who you are as a bride that it's hard for other people to help you when it's all about you and what you want. So it, weddings are kind of those situations where you want to be selfish, but because you're selfish, you don't really want other people involved. If you are a people pleaser like I am, I want things our particular way. So because it's so particular to who you are, it's hard to ask for help when it's about you. Like it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like you have to do it because that's your role and your responsibility. Um, I don't know how it is for other brides and if they had like a hardcore like wedding planner be there and sit there and go through all the steps with them. I did not have that. I planned my whole wedding on my own. I never really attended weddings in my life either and I never literally, obviously I never had a wedding. I never planned a wedding so it was very, that was like extra hard for me because I kind of like bloomed from nowhere of planning a wedding. Um, 
thankfully it happened to be my wedding and now I can like go and help other brides and my sisters if they get married I can help them and plan for their wedding and my friends because I planned my whole wedding on my own I also don't want to discredit the people that did help me I did have um, a few specific people that really like were my rock during this whole process of planning for my wedding I had a lot of people like literally help me give me advice that allow me to like even like use the resources that they had which is so amazing so one of my other tips tip extra tip is to also not be afraid to ask for help I struggled in this so much until I actually like voiced what I needed help with and then there were there were people that were so like heartfelt that they wanted to be there for you okay I'm I'm like I keep going all over the place but every time I talk it makes me want to lead up to like talk about something else anyways it's leading me to also talk about I'm the kind of person who will not ask if I know that that person's not going to say yes or if they're not going to be willing so because of that it's really hard for me to ask for help um it's not all the time that you are surrounded by people that always want to help you and they have that kind willing heart so it was really hard for me to ask for help because I had to literally analyze who the friends that I had were that were going to be willing in this season of my life to make it about me and to like have a helping hand um so uh, yeah um it was very it was, it was a very lonely time because I had to do it all on my own and because I did also I didn't all I also did not have a lot of time um I had three months to plan my wedding and I kind of procrastinated so I started for real for real planning like two months before my wedding and because of that time frame I had a new to-do list every single day leading up to my wedding which was so exhausting for me and so exhausting I literally would wake up wedding do, do wedding stuff on my free time I would do wedding stuff on my own time I would do wedding stuff I would after after work before work I would do wedding stuff so there's a lot of like there's just a lot of things because at the end of it you're trying to get all the tedious things done oh uh, yeah so ask for help um something I would change if you're watching this and you were part of my wedding team I had a big wedding team not big but everyone involved was a part of my wedding team so um if you were part of my wedding team don't take this to events I would have probably had a smaller bridal circle I think that as women age and we get older it's so hard for us to have friends and we all are so like we're so stuck on the 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 idea that we need a lot of bridesmaids and this was literally me I was like okay I need I need friends so I can have bridesmaids for my wedding but in reality like everyone that supported me before I got engaged and was there for me and loved me was enough for me those were all the people that I needed during my wedding time so I guess like I wouldn't have worried so much about the number of my bridesmaids instead of like the loyalty that each person had for me um which I don't have any beef with the people that were in my bridesmaids I only had six bridesmaids it, I did kind of keep it small but I think that I'm what I'm trying to say is because your wedding is so so like detailed and particular to who you are as a bride it's hard to put that burden on other bridesmaids if their heart is not willing to accept like the des desires that I had during that time so and just like being on a bridal party is very hard I would say that it's like a lot of responsibility because mm, a wedding is a big event and a big event calls for lots of responsibilities and lots of responsibilities falling onto the bride you want to help them as much as you can at this time I didn't have a lot of help so I just I guess like in small simple terms I would have kept it to like my very close family friends and just family okay now I like it sounds bad because they they were all my family friends <laughs> but I think specifically it would I would pick people who I can voice I would pick people who would not be offended by my desires basically you know what I mean like I would 
like pick people you're comfortable enough to voice your opinions to without um, the idea of them being offended or feeling some type of way. I don't even know how to word this, but if I basically was to not like something and I said I don't like that idea, I would want to freely be able to openly say that instead of like thinking about what they want instead of what I want. Does that make sense? I, I feel like I'm trying to explain the same thing in different ways but like the same way which is still more confusing but I hope that makes sense. Basically I would just have a smaller circle because you don't want to like offend anybody and because like if you this is advice to like people who want to be a part of a wedding party you're gonna have to use your time and you're gonna have to use your money and you're gonna have to use up all the loyalty that you have for that person in that especially that wedding season because they need it the most like they need your love they need your support they need your loyalty they need your time your creativity and everything that you can give them because this is like the one of the most important things that's going to ever happen in their life so uh, there you go bridesmaids grooms men's wedding parties brides grooms all you people out there that want to um support each other there's a little advice for you um and then my other advice would be do not focus on the small small details and pleasing every single person in the room i don't know what it was i literally like i'm a person who is like I'm not going to think about other people because no matter how things are happening, they're going to judge you no matter what. That's the kind of person that I am, right? Where like, I'm like, God knows my heart. If, blah, blah, blah. I struggle with this. I feel like I struggled so much with like, like just the little details of how like, how the decorations are going to look, how I'm going to walk. How the song correlates to the to the steps that I take just like the little tedious things I was like oh what if someone sees me do this what if someone like sees that about um how I plan the wedding what if they don't like the time like girl nobody cares and it's your wedding so make it about you don't think so much about other people okay um it will literally like just eat you up and then the other just personal thing that I literally regret. I regret this so much. It's so, so sad. But I regret not being able to go and greet all the tables and all the guests that were there to come and support me. I was not able to take pictures with everyone. And it was, it's literally like the saddest moment in my life. I regret it so much. I would redo all of this just so I could take pictures with everyone again. Um, it was literally like one of the best days of my life. So funny. Okay, let me backtrack. Every single thing that happened and I, of me drowning was all worth it because my wedding day was actually so incredible. I loved it so much. I was so joyed, so happy. I was so supported. Everyone there, that was there, like everything that I worried about and everything that I went through leading up to actual wedding time and day was all worth it. It was all worth it. All those tears, all those late nights, all those inside arguments anxiety people like uh, commenting at me and me like being so stressed was all worth it because the wedding day was so incredible so amazing and i literally could feel like this like jesus in that room with us being like this is what i planned for you a long time ago you when you were worried as a little girl of who you were gonna marry <laughs> and so it, i just like a lot of people showed up a lot of people from out of town a lot of people from elementary school like I had people from elementary school come and like support us and family that I never met which you think that I would be bothered that people that were there that I, I, I didn't know was gonna be there because I thought it was gonna be a bother for me but it actually wasn't it was so heartwarming for me to like be able to meet like my aunties and uncles and grandpas that I have never ever ever met in my life it was so heartwarming everything about that day was incredible and so uh yeah I would totally a hundred thousand percent do it again um yeah that's just the thing that I would change is please go greet all the guests that come because they're there for you please go take pictures with everyone there I wish I could so that I could remember remember everyone that was there during that day to, that came and supported me but now I just have to rely on my brain I'll rely on my memory and my memory sucks I like I don't I don't remember anything it's so bad but uh, it's okay I, I, I love that day. I cried like the whole time. My eyes hurt so much at the end of the night. I had no energy for anything. 
but it was so incredible so yeah my last and final advice all right sorry about that my camera died so it's been a few days later um my last and final advice for you guys is probably the most important advice and i would just advise you guys to not worry so much about this one day event that's going to happen in your life although it's one of the most important events because everything that leads up to it is the goal that you've been wanting with a person your whole life so it is very important that you do have a wedding and you plan accordingly but the most important part is the marriage that comes on after that for the whole life that you're gonna have after that prioritize that try to prep for it emotionally mentally financially spiritually so they one emotionally all of those things are gonna be like it's gonna come at you and then you're gonna look at the wedding time and you're gonna be like dang that was nice that wasn't all that bad um so please don't worry so much about the little details of your wedding and planning for that because you do have a whole marriage ahead of you that you do need to prepare for um and just you'll it'll be a lot a roller coaster a whole cycle i've only been married for like three months and we are still in the stage of trying to navigate each other's totally different lives and combining it into one so um that's going to be the hardest part is just continuing to stay committed to each other even though you guys are indifferent um yeah that is my advice to you hopefully you can chill a little bit if you are a bride trying to seek advice because you're so exhausted um or if you're not i hope this um video helped you regardless because this is all that i have for you guys if you are a bride i would love to hear about your experiences down below if you guys can comment your tips advice and experiences and if you were just get going to get married congratulations it's gonna be very fun later you can come back and comment your advice and tips and experience i would love to hear all about it but i just want to let you guys know i am very proud of all the married couples out there because it's one of life's hardest things to do thank you so much for being here guys continue to stay faithful love you bye